Hello everybody and welcome back to a new video. Today we're going to talk about the Sony 85mm f1.8. This is probably my favorite E-mount lens and I've been using it for over three years on the Sony a7R 2 and I've done a video on this over three years ago and I'm really not too happy with that video. It was quite sloppy and I've always been wanting to redo that video. I've always had that in the back of my mind so today I'm gonna do a proper review of this lens that finally does it justice. Throughout this video I'm gonna show you a bunch of example images that I've shot with this lens, especially portraits, and I'm gonna talk about everything from beginning to end that you need to know about this lens before you make your purchasing decision. I've also not been using this lens, despite it being my favorite E-mount lens, I've not been using it that much in the past one or two years, and I'm gonna talk about why at the end of this video. First of all, let's talk about price. I paid 560 euro for this lens back in 2019, but you can have it for around 450 euro right now on Amazon. But I've seen it as low as 380 during Prime Day. Those are really, really good numbers if you're looking into buying this lens right now. But it's not that great news for me because, as I said, I paid 560. And if it loses its new value, it's also going to lose a bit of resale value. But yeah, great news for you if you're looking into buying this lens. So what do you get for that price? A full metal enclosure with typical Sony styling, a huge focus ring, a programmable function button and AF-MF toggle on the side and of course the gigantic front element. One of the best things about this lens is the weight and size. It is quite compact coming in at only 8.2 cm long and weighing in at 370 grams. In the front you have a 67mm filter thread which I'm a big fan of because several of my lenses share that thread size. I am rocking a UV filter on here simply to protect the front element. I do that on pretty much all of my lenses just in case I accidentally bonk it. By the way, I made a video on why UV lens filters are theoretically useless if you're interested, but I still use them for protection. The lens hood that comes with this lens is quite large and will help you even more in case of an accidental drop or hit than a UV filter. Okay, let's talk about the focal length. 85mm is, in my opinion, the perfect focal length for portraits. But watch out, if you're using a APS-C sensor, like the A6000 series of cameras used by Sony, then you're gonna result, or this lens is gonna result in a 127mm focal length instead of the 85mm due to the APS-C crop. So I wouldn't actually recommend this lens if you are an APS-C camera user. 127mm isn't really comfortable for me to use for portraits. I mean it's possible, but it's really quite tight and it's not gonna be as versatile. The thing is, if you're an APS-C camera user, I would recommend you would rather get a 50mm lens because that means with the APS-C crop you're gonna get 75mm, which is a lot closer to these 85. The great thing about the 85mm focal length, especially combined with a low aperture like f1.8, is the subject separation you can achieve. But 85mm still feels like a natural focal length. It's not zoomed in so far that it looks like a wildlife shot. Okay, let's get into the performance of this lens. There really isn't much to say other than holy shit is this lens sharp. Even at f1.8, completely wide open, this lens is easily the sharpest lens that I own. The problem is, combining this super sharp lens with the 42 megapixel sensor like the one on my a7R2 means that you can see everything. When I take photos of people, they are always super weirded out when I zoom in on the big screen because you can see every little pore in your skin and every imperfection you didn't even know you had. Autofocus performance is also great, I don't have any complaints here. I've set the eye detection AF to the button on the side, which is super practical when shooting portraits, especially because at 85mm and f1.8 the focus plane is super thin. I've also done some video stuff with this lens and it can get you some really really nice results, especially on a gimbal it can get some amazing looking results. Another great thing is that the autofocus motor in here is pretty much silent, so if you're doing audio as well, you're not gonna hear it in your recordings. But I would say this lens is geared more towards still photography because there isn't any inbuilt stabilization or anything, but that of course doesn't mean that you can't use it for video as well. This lens has one big downside, and that is the minimum focus distance. At 80 centimeters, it is quite far. Getting close for product shots or anything like that isn't easy. This is of course helped by the sharpness and the fact that you can crop in quite far if you have a camera with a high megapixel count, but it's definitely not ideal and sometimes can be a bit annoying. I don't know much about lens design, but I feel like the minimum focus distance was probably a trade-off by Sony to keep this lens this small and compact. But of course, that's just a guess. If you know more about lens design, please leave a comment down below. 
Okay, let's get into the most important part of this video and the biggest upside of this lens. This lens has what I like to describe as perfect imperfections. It's a mixture of natural vignetting and spherical bokeh that give this lens an amazing unique look. These characteristics are the reason why I think this lens is so perfect for portraits, but some people don't like them. These imperfections make some people reach for the 85mm f1.4 G Master, but I would choose this lens over the G Master equivalent any day of the week, and here's why. Applying lens profile corrections in Lightroom, you can see the relatively heavy vignetting around the edges at f1.8. But this is what gives this lens such an amazing look for portraits. It works perfectly for highlighting the subject and giving a natural fall off into the shadows towards the edges. Another big plus is the spherical bokeh, which I absolutely love. I used to own a variant of the Helios 44, a lens known and loved for the spherical bokeh. The 85's bokeh isn't as extreme as the Helios and works in a less distracting way. The unique characteristics of this lens make images way more interesting and in my opinion don't distract at all because the natural vignetting highlights your subject. Not only would I argue that these imperfections are big upsides compared to the 85 1.4 G Master, but that lens is also three times the price of this one. Now after all of this praise I've given this lens and also calling it my favorite E-mount lens, what is the reason that I've not picked it up that much in the past one or two years to go shoot? The reason is actually quite simple, I've not shot portraits that much. In 2019 when I bought this lens I shot a bunch of portraits, and most example portrait shots I've shown in this video are from 2019. In 2021 I've had a big phase of just shooting mostly analog. This year I've done more street photography after I bought the Fujifilm X-T30, and I also did a bunch of landscape photography while spending three weeks in July in the Swiss Alps. When you go hiking, weight plays a big factor, because whatever you bring in your backpack has to be carried up the mountain and back down again. I've mostly brought my Tamron 28 to 75 and my 70 to 300 for hiking, simply because they gave me such a high amount of flexibility, allowing me to shoot anything from 28mm to 300. Where the Sony 85mm f1.8 really shines is portrait photography, or just people photography in general. With the low aperture, it is also great for taking photos at events in somewhat difficult lighting conditions. Also for street photography, it is great because it allows you to isolate your subjects well. I've simply not shot portraits in a long time, and in other circumstances I picked the versatility of the 28-75. to But I would love to get back into that part of photography again. To conclude, the unique look and insane sharpness this lens provides is the reason why I call it the portrait beast. But combining that with the compact form factor while being on the side of relatively affordable E-mount lenses results in a great package for many different disciplines of photography, and a price to performance ratio that is very high. If you have a specific use case in mind for this lens where you know the low light capabilities and great subject isolation can work well, be it portrait photography, event photography, automotive photography or street photography, then I can recommend this lens to you. If you're not going to use this lens wide open at f1.8 often and don't plan on using that level of subject isolation that often, I would recommend you look at a more versatile option like the Tamron 28-75 f2.8. This will give you a very similar focal length at the top end and supply a lot more versatility while still being able to go down to f2.8. If you enjoyed this video, it would be really nice if you could consider subscribing to the channel or leaving a like on this video because that helps me a lot. I purely make these videos for enjoyment and fun. I just have a blast making these videos, but I've never made a single cent or anything from any of my videos. So any support from your side would be greatly appreciated. And yeah, follow me on Instagram at futc.photography and see you, see you in the next one. Bye bye!